Mm-hmm. Sure. Is um I, Carla? I think we should just wait for rune tone at this point. It's going to be oh, actually, tight. Can yeah. we wait till later? Oh, we, we have time. Yeah, we, okay. we, yeah, we have time. Okay. Uh, Pick a time. Okay. So rune tone or like sync in five, four. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live recording of the Engadget podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar, and I'm joined with Sherlyn Lowe. Hey, Sherlyn. Hello. Our, our reviews editor and our producer, Ben Elman. Hi. Hi. Wow, Ben, you're just really, really going up there <laughs> on the high. Uh, this is the stream where we you get to see how the podcast is made. So you're going to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff, how the sausage is made. Typically, and uh, I always we'll said we weren't going to say sausage on this podcast anymore <laughs> because you never want to see how the sausage is made. And this week, we'll be talking about the Surface Duo because the embargo just dropped. Sherlin's review of the Surface Duo just went live on the site, so check that out at engadget.com. And also a bunch of other stuff. There's a lot of Xbox news, especially around the Series S and the Series X and release dates and prices and all that fun stuff. So that is what we'll be doing. We'll wait a little bit for people to join in. But uh, are you guys all set with the show and the show notes? Uh, I have the show notes open on the little Surface Duo here, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, <laughs> oh, you're brave that. today. Okay. And uh, what was I going to say? And also, we're keeping an eye on the chat. We might not be able to talk while we're recording the podcast segments proper, but we'll be able to, we have breaks in between. We'll be able to answer your questions and also stick around at the end because we're going to do a live Q&A, take your questions about whatever we talked about, um, sure. but we expect most people want to do the Surface Duo. Yeah, so uh, uh, chime in on the YouTube chat. You can also... Tweet us, uh, uh, tweet at Engadget with the hashtag podcast live. We'll be looking at that too. If you don't want to fight through the YouTube chat rooms, because those things move fast. And if I look slightly distracted, because I, I just logged into Twitter to see if anyone <laughs> uh, see Devendra's tweet of this live stream and to retweet it. And I got mm -hmm. included, our review was included in a list uh, Renee Ritchie posted of all the reviews that are out of the Surface Duo. And people are all like chiming in. And yeah, the, the, uh, Anyone on the show have thoughts right now? The feeling is just uh, overall disappointment, but we'll save this for the show. Save it for the cast. Yeah, I will. I will. Save it for save the cast. Save it for the podcast. All right. Are we uh, good to go? And also, when we talk about the Xbox Series S and X, Matt Smith uh, from oh, yeah. Gadget's UK Bureau will be joining us as well. So we'll have a fun guest on there. Let me just double check. Lord. It's such a huge tweet. <laughs> thread such a thread it's a huge thread where like there's non-stop notifications one of uh -huh, those uh -huh, uh -huh. because there's a lot of people in it um i just want to get matt's full title matt smith is the uk bureau chief yeah, yeah, yeah. i see that now yeah. i respell bureau can't spell -E 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 -E. i'll let microsoft word spell 
All right. Are we good to start the show? Yes, I think we might be. I cool. Think we are. And now we're gonna we're gonna start everything proper, and in between sections, we can take some time for questions and show, yeah, and show off the surface duo more. <laughs> also, just a hi to everyone that's already gathered and is here waiting. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for spending Thursday mornings with us talking tech. All if you can only stuff. spend part of your Thursday morning with us, remember, you can catch everything else on the podcast. If you come yes. in late, you can listen to the stuff that you missed. If you go had subscribe. to cut out early, go subscribe, oh, yeah. rate us on iTunes, all that stuff. All that fun stuff. Okay. Oh, Are we ready to go? Let's start yeah. in three, two, one. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Engadget podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardawar. And reviews editor Sherilyn Lowe. This week, it's all about the Surface Duo and uh, Microsoft's Xbox Series S and X. And uh, hmm, that's probably a little <laughs> bit of a problematic lettering scheme for them. Uh, we got a lot of news around Xbox, but mostly, I think what we're most excited by is uh, the Surface Duo review, which oh, Sherilyn yeah. Lowe just posted uh, on Engadget. And we can talk about it more. And we can talk about Finally. turning it on and all that, yes. the fun stuff you would do with a modern device, right? uh fun stuff sure uh, sure fun's the word for it i guess <laughs> fun's the word for it as fun's always if you're enjoying the show be sure to subscribe to the engadget podcast on itunes or your podcatcher of choice we're on spotify we're, we're everywhere modern podcasts can be found email us at podcast at engadget.com and if you're around thursday mornings you can check us out live around 10 a.m eastern as we record the show we do some like behind the scenes q a and we take yeah, we take questions, we show off devices, all that fun stuff. So you get some cool behind the scenes action if you join us there. So Sherlin, the Surface Duo, it is finally <laughs> here, the, the killer dual screen device from Microsoft. Who needs the Galaxy Fold when Microsoft uh. is here with the Surface Duo? What are, your, what are your overall thoughts? And I mean, we've been like, you, you did not score this thing very high. So what do you think at this point? Uh, I, I, <laughs> this is a tough one. I did not score this thing very high, I guess, uh, compared to other devices that we review, but we generally also review like higher end, better made devices in general. Um, but better this thing made. scored one, <laughs> this thing scored one point more than the original Galaxy Fold, one or two points more, but, uh, That's and what, a lot more than, You're at that was like 70. Now, the mm -hmm. original Galaxy Fold was like 70 or so. The ZTE X mm -hmm. on M got like 69. But really, our scoring system is just more, it makes more sense if you look at our sure. rubric. And, and you scored this one a 73, which is not, that's it's clearly in the do not recommend. Be, but, 71, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, clearly and, in the and, do not recommend territory, right? I, that's not what our rubric would say, but I think <laughs> that uh, if you look at it on a scale of five stars, it's like three and a half stars. So it's not like, a shining four star review. It's mm -hmm. it's like there's a lot to be excited by and excited for, but there's not uh, there's it's not yet time to buy something like this that I unless you have a lot of money and you're a diehard fan. So that's like the general takeaway, right? I think I f I felt like I needed to do this review a lot of. Uh, do a service, do this product service because it's yeah. everyone's been so excited about it, and I really kind of wanted to like it because also when you might review Microsoft product, the fans come at you if you say anything mean. <laughs> um, so I was like, I definitely like had that in my head, but I have to also be fair and honest, right? And this thing, the hardware is nice for the most part, and the software is just as has been the case for dual screen devices in the last few years, the software still needs so much work. Yeah. Um, I'm going to dive into that really quickly, but for the full details and the more detailed like impressions, you can check out our review that's already on Engadget.com, our review video, which I just want to shout out is a three-way collaboration between <laughs> me, Chris Velasco, our senior mobile editor, and Brian O, our video producer. It's was like the first time I'd gone and worked with Brian in a long time. And it's like old times. Yeah. I know. It felt like, can I just say that like, I forget how much work it is to do reviews on your own mm -hmm. until I go and help get help from someone else. Like <laughs> in pandemic times, I'm doing everything myself. I'm shooting my stand up, I'm shooting my photos. I'm doing the work of reviewing it and writing it. But I had help this time. So it was fun. It's it's nice to see some normalcy hopefully return. Anyway. Mm -hmm. 
the hardware here, two 5.6 inch AMOLEDs connected together to form an 8.1 inch screen. That's about like 1800 uh, together combined in terms mm -hmm. of resolution. Uh, each of these panels is four by three. So it's a little wide. And that wideness is one of the reasons it's like a little off as a phone. So this thing, right, right. The way it's boxy, the whole, yeah. It's poof. Ma, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I approached this review kind of looking at the Surface Duo in all the different things it's trying to be. So first as a phone, and then as a mm -hmm. tablet, and then as the things in between. And as a phone, do do not use the camera. Just do not. Like it's a bad camera. It's... Although it got better with you, right? They issued some software updates since I tested it, and yeah, supposed to be yeah. better. Yeah. It. it... <laughs> <laughs> so what happens with the Surface Duo is that there's only one camera and it's above the right display when it's both when it's opened up and facing you. But not everyone's going to take photos with it like that. Everyone's going to like mm -hmm. fold it down and have the screen facing outside. So because of that, it needs like the Surface Duo needs to know which screen you're looking at to take a photo with. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the software comes in. The software needs to know where you're looking and it just does not do that very well. And that's why the vendor was having a lot of issues because it just wouldn't stay on for me. Well, also it was just a bad camera. Like for me, the awareness was there, but the camera sucked. So the camera quality is not great. It works well enough in daylight. And so like blue skies, red buildings, whatever, all look good mm -hmm. and sharp, but at night it's pretty garbage. And <laughs> in a portrait mode, uh, we took photos of Brian's dog and she looked much cuter on my Pixel 4a. Like, let's, be, let's just put that that way. Um, mm -hmm. Because the portrait mode is superior there. But yeah, no, the camera itself is bad, but the software, it's it's going to hold up anytime you want to try to get like something that's fleeting. So like your right. dog was, had his tongue out and then you wanted to take a photo. That's not going to happen. Your mm -hmm. kid was smiling. And then when by the time you get a phone out, your kid will be crying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And also so, like you have to take factor in the time to, to rotate the phone if it's closed or anything. It too. Exactly. Like, yeah, there, so, there's so much friction in front of what you're trying so to do, high. unless you keep the phone open with both screens on both sides. And you could do that. I've talked to some Microsoft reps. I do that, that yeah. That's how they've been using the phone and it's perfectly yes. fine, but yes. it's still kind of annoying. Yeah. So yeah, that's the thing is that you were, you're supposed to, if you, I've been advised by <laughs> friends in the, in, in, you know, in reviewer land also that like, I, I was at first like, Ugh, I can't see my updates on the outside screen because there's no outside screen. They're like, mm -hmm. why don't you fold it all the right all the way around? And I'm like, oh, okay. So I used it a while like that. Yeah. It's better I that way. I think listening to her reviewer friends and not me because that was literally the first thing I told you to do. No, that's not <laughs> in what you my told notes me to do. for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no. I will admit to not having actually. No, read no, your no, notes. no, no, yeah. <laughs> but I anyway, sat down so and I wrote Sherlyn a two-page document. Based on my testing and Sherlyn not reading it. After the Android wow. review to do anything other than wow. dive into the review. Oh yeah, anyway. also Sherlyn reviewed Android and we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later on. <laughs> so anyway, that's one of the phone things, right? A good smartphone camera is almost par for the course these days and it just doesn't do that very well. Then we have other phone things like making calls and like that worked, mm -hmm. I guess. I called Chris Velasco and we were like... Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me. It's okay, not great. Gonna hold up to your head, right? Because it's it's, so it's not like so wide that my hands struggle to hold it up, but it felt a little weird. Like it looks a little odd, mm -hmm. but again, like, eh. I mean, it's it's very it's like, much. It is sort of like talking into a Nintendo DS. I think yes. the DS Lite, <laughs> in a way, because of the folding mechanism, and even though the screens are thin together. They're a little thick. Uh, the thing weighs over half a pound. Uh, I think the oh. main thing for me, like it's well. I didn't feel like it was, I mean, oh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel that long, uh, that heavy. It's 250 grams, which is like, yeah, I guess that's over, it is over that's half over a pound. over half a pound. That is heavy. But for a I didn't yeah. know, I mean, I didn't hold it up to my ear that much because I, I guess most people sure. take longer calls with earbuds. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I think the bigger ahead. problem too is that even if you fold it over and you're just using one screen, there is no one thumbed great interaction with this phone so, because yeah. it's so wide you need both it's thumbs at all times definitely as a yeah. phone uh it's so wide that it's a two-hand phone and it's also but i mean there is one hand that's typing on yeah. this like on there this is but it's board. not great yeah come it's on it's fine it's fine the one hand that's typing honestly is fine it's just everything else that's not typing on this mm -hmm. phone mode is not great. So it does this, this was, the keyboard that. does this thing that I find really, they think it's really helpful where if you have one side of the screen open or if you have it 
folded open booklet mode, one-handed keyboards will appear depending on the yeah. screen you've like Which interacted with. Which has actually been pretty helpful for me. It's fine, but I don't I don't like typing with a single thumb like that. Like it's still awkward. It's not as fast as one thumb typing on a normal phone just because of the way your hands are held open. So I found that annoying. I had actually asked Microsoft if they considered like a halfway keyboard that was right in between both screens in booklet mode that, that may be that a little better with two thumbs. Because yeah. the hinge will eat up the keyboard unless they, well, no. I mean, they will probably build it. Well, no, you would have to be smart enough to yeah. go over both. That's what I'm saying. There is yeah. there is a sort of split keyboard, but it didn't look yeah. great for me. Anyway, I, I had no issues with the one-handed typing. I found it OK. Um, the the keyboard is a whole other issue we will get <laughs> into. But that's, that's all the main phone things, yeah. right? Whether you're trying to use it one-handed and uh, taking photos or making calls. I think can we, can as we a talk phone, about some of the modes too, by the way, because I right, feel like I'm we about skipped to over the, the big mode. thing. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 as a phone, here's the wrap up. Like it's yeah. fine. It's nothing great, nothing terrible. As as a tablet, it is mm -hmm. to me pretty garbage. Um, and as a tablet, so this is what I mean. Like we gotta we gotta situate this. So this so is as a closed a tablet, book device, you open it up all the way. Means. Yeah and they're you lay it flat so that it's flush mm -hmm. 180 degrees and then there are other modes where like you have a half folded and i can get into explaining what each mode is in a little bit so tablet mode again is when you have both screens side by side and there's that hinge in the middle and to me that's the main reason why it's pretty bad because that hinge eats up stuff mm -hmm. uh if if you're not using swift key you're using any other keyboard which you shouldn't because it no other keyboard understands this device just yet uh you'll lose buttons that you can press right if you're gaming in this mode there's parts of the screen you can't touch so if there's like a character uh like an objective that you need to hit that's in the screen right. the hinge you need to move around it that are like two or three letters long mm -hmm. so like was is as those are gone yeah um but i would, I would say by the way like it depends on how you're using it as a tablet just because I, I think the hinge is very noticeable right it's there you would never full yes. screen video and watch it across both screens because that's it insane yeah. it just looks bad but uh i did really enjoy doing things like uh full screen the new york times app and you know holding the device like portrait style like an ipad almost and scrolling up and down and reading articles, even though there were sometimes things cut off in the middle, like it, you just scroll up a little and you can still keep reading. So I actually like that ability to dive deeper into long articles and stuff. So that part worked. Yeah, for me. I, yeah. You, and you can for sure do that. If you need a bigger screen because words are small and you need them to look bigger yeah. too, that's definitely helpful um, to have this orientation. For me, I've always enjoyed reading it like one on one screen alone. So that's fine by me. Um, but yeah, I mean, compared to the, the, uh, Galaxy Z Fold 2, which is something that a lot of readers and listeners ask us to do is compare this to the Z Fold 2, mm -hmm. because it's, it's time to have this foldables <laughs> versus dual screen debate right now, right? It's, it's these two devices are coming out. Um, I finally spent some time with the Z Fold 2 as well. So one app that I use a lot in, or not use a lot, one app that I use to compare tablet mode in is Instagram. And on the on the duo, Instagram just is like, no, thank you. The the hinge to me is really bad. Like you imagine you're looking at a picture of a cute like, sure. what a beautiful scene or like mm -hmm. gl globe wanderers or something is one of the yeah. things I follow. So Instagram in full screen tablet mode, a problem. I didn't mind it in like the split like booklet mode where it's fine in the split book. Mode. We'll get to that yeah. in a little bit. But in this tablet mode, Instagram does not look great. But on yeah. Z Fold 2, this is what I'm trying to get to, which is on the Z Fold 2, yeah, there's no hinge. Instead, there's a little crease and that's fine. So it pictures look better. But Instagram is so bad at understanding and maybe there's an Android problem, but Instagram is so is bad at Android understanding problem. Yeah. Um, what the screen size is that it it actually, instead of taking up the whole screen, it will it shows the phone version, which is the long version of Instagram, and then the That's back, about right. uh, the rest of the two That's sides are right. flanked with a blank space. Like, like so, the fundamental so, problem with both of these is that Android stinks for tablets, and this this is why the entire Android tablet market has kind of collapsed, aside from the super cheap stuff like the Fire tablets and um, you know the really high end well, Samsung stuff, which is their custom software. Really, and we're seeing a lot of that. we're seeing a resurgence in lower mm -hmm. cost uh, Android. Tablets tablets so i don't know maybe android will feel the pressure to improve its software i mean it looks like it's working with microsoft it's been 10 years here. and google's like it has been forever and i'm not yeah. gonna like defend google because i do think they have a lot of work to do on this 
mobile OS and encouraging developers to improve uh, their apps and the experience overall. But also when you say things like you like reading the New York Times full screen, you're also like, I like this experience. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there are things that you're okay with uh, that I wouldn't be okay with. So I think sure. that it's, it really depends on what you're going to use it for too. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway... Can we, can we take a step back, by the way? Like, so you did phone tablet, phone mode, tablet mode. Those are things we know. We know how to use devices like that. I feel like this device, the real calling card is that it does things nothing else has really done before. So there's booklet mode where you're holding it open like a little I, booklet. I, uh, first, I wouldn't say no yeah. one else has done this before. Everyone that has made mm. a dual screen phone has done something like this, a sort of multitasking mode. But okay, so the two Not other really like this, yeah. There's two or three other modes you'll you'll really use this in. One is book mode when you have the screens sort of folded and you're running two mm-hmm. apps side by side and they're taking up uh, each app is taking up one regular smartphone screen or well regular meaning four by three. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's the book mode. And I like book mode a lot. And we'll get into yeah. why I like book mode a lot later. But then if you wanted to go and overview into all the modes that are coming, um, if you flip this book mode into horizontal landscape, that's laptop-ish mode, um, which to me is garbage. And again, and I'll tell you why again in a little bit, but uh, mostly because the keyboard experience is really bad. Then if you fold the screens outwards, halfway you get a more traditional tent mode where which we've seen on like convertible um laptops we've seen on other dual screen phones as well where both screens are facing out and you can prop Mm -hmm. it up on say an airplane tray table um this is good for like watching videos on the four by three inch screen which is really nice by the way um but my favorite mode turned out to be uh with intent mode, but instead of propping them up on the edges, I actually used one of the screens as a base. So like, I put one of the screens facing down mm-hmm. and the other screen kind of facing me. I used this, <laughs> one of the side effects for of reviewing a Microsoft product, which I tweeted this out already, is mm-hmm. I've become incredibly addicted to solitaire. Like it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I use this mode where it's half propped up to to play hours and hours of solitaire. Is this Sherlin solitaire. playing bad games on airplane <laughs> yeah. back seats all over again? I miss airplane bad airplane <laughs> games so much today. <laughs> <laughs> You're recreating the experience. Uh, let me just say, like, there are a couple of things in booklet mode. I really enjoyed having like Twitter on one side and yes. the New York Times app on the other, where I'm just not staring and doom scrolling my Twitter feed. Like I'm actually being productive and doing other stuff and seeing what's happening on Twitter. It's that sort of multitasking that's interesting to me and exciting. But yeah, it was still super buggy. I know you had issues with software problems, right, Shalin? So- and it seems like every reviewer did. Again, yeah, like I said, this is this is something that a lot of dual screen, even the Galaxy Z Fold 2 can do this. You can have two apps side by side and interact. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, I really liked book mode. Book mode is the one thing, the one shining thing about the Surface Duo. <laughs> uh, you know, I did things like, uh, yeah, the Ventress said Twitter on one side and whatever else you want to do on the other side. In this mode, though, you want to be careful. Uh, mm-hmm. If you have a video that you want to play, play it on the left side uh, if that's okay for you because the speaker is on the left side. There's only one speaker on this thing. So if you're playing and a video on the right. it sounds bad too. That's it not sounds, great. Yeah, it's loud, but it doesn't have great quality. Yeah. Um, yeah. The video, if it's on the right and the sound coming from the left, it feels a little jarring to me, but it's not a huge deal. Now, um, mm-hmm. with these two apps side by side, you can do a lot of things concurrently, which is nice. Twitter while watching videos, or for me, it was like uh, watching a YouTube video and like noting down timestamps on the other screen, which is nice, right? Because I wanted to make notes for our editors or something. Um, the best thing that Microsoft has done is to enable drag and drop. Drag and drop is something that will be very helpful for people who are doing a lot of like, I don't know, referencing of a certain articles or doing yeah. a lot of research as they're going along. It only works on Microsoft apps for now. So like to do word edge and all of that stuff. I've never <laughs> used Edge as much as I have in this review, by the way. And Edge, by the way, doesn't even perform that well. Chrome s- scrolled a lot smoother and just worked yeah. a lot better. But Edge is the thing where, yeah, you could take some text, it's throw it over to Word easily. I would say some of the features that Microsoft built in Chrome also offers as mm-hmm. well, like opening a link in another window on the other screen when it detects it's empty. Um, Chrome also sort of does that in a similar way. So, you know, maybe Google will update Chrome to work better with the Duo. But yeah, so... <laughs> So drag and drop, uh, when I spoke with Microsoft, they were like, oh yeah, apps have to set their, uh, developers have to set their apps as targets for both dragging as well as dropping before Mm -hmm. it will work. So it sounds like developer support needs to come and I don't know if it's going to come. 
they've had mm. one year to get developers on board, right? They announced it and they were like working with developers for a year before releasing this. And still there's not a lot of apps that work with this feature. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but book mode is otherwise great. And the hardware is so nicely weighted that it's actually very easy to hold with one hand, two hand, however it's you like hold it. It's perfectly weighted. I think the way we described it in the hands-on, it feels like the way, um, you know, knife makers really balance their things or even yeah, sword makers, it's like it's that. well balanced on both sides. And Microsoft was talking to us. They really had to think about the hardware, right? Like that's yes. why there's no NFC. That's why there's yes. no, um, what else? Wireless charging and headphone yeah. jack too. Well, headphone jack, it's not, it's too it's, thin to even have the headphone jack yeah, anywhere. But if they put in a coil for NFC, that would add weight to one side. So they have to yeah. balance it to another. And there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm sad it doesn't really have dust proofing or waterproofing. Yeah. Because apparently know, they couldn't I'm seal reading. the hinge. Yeah. It's sad. Um, so anyway, book mode we've established is pretty good. The other things are, uh, I also talked about like the tent casino mode. Um, the last thing is laptop mode. Well, not really the last thing. You can use this in any variety of ways. Yeah, yeah. Laptop mode is just bad. A, I don't like touch being keyboards for like a laptop style typing experience. But uh, B, when, when you're away, so you're describing putting it up, one screen up, yes. one screen flat on the table and like having the full keyboard in front of you. If you don't yep. have a computer nearby, that's not a bad way to type a long email, but it's not, yeah, not something I would use for a deep I, work. I right? sooner do two handed typing because on right, this right. Or a 5.6 inch screen, uh, even that sort of touch typing is not great. I tried even using mm -hmm. two finger typing rather than my usual typing, and it still was not good. So, okay, so in this mode, never mind the typing experience being not that great. The apps just don't understand what the hell is going on when you yeah, do that. Yeah. We're like, I am watching, <laughs> uh, say, I'm watching a video up top on the on the monitor type screen. And then on the base screen, I am trying to type a message to a friend. Anytime I try to like input text on the bottom screen, mm -hmm. either the app completely takes up both screens and like clears my video up top, or the keyboard covers the bottom app entirely. So I can't even see what the hell I'm typing. And in some cases, like when I was trying to log into Google Drive on the bottom screen, the keyboard appeared covered what I was typing. <laughs> Never mind. I can't remember what my password or my username. Mm -hmm. I'm going to type it in. Clear the keyboard afterwards. It didn't type anything into the field. And I repeated this like three times. I was like making sure I definitely hit the input field. I definitely <laughs> hit the letters. I definitely hit return and enter. Nothing would freaking work. So it's still definitely yeah. like yeah. finicky. And this is what we say about first gen products, by the way, is yeah. even when they're cool, even when they're super seem exciting, never buy first gen products because there are so many bugs to work out. There's so much. So don't. where do you, yeah, where do you land on that, Sherlyn? Who is, should don't anybody buy this? Should they wait for sales? What's up? There are some people that will buy this regardless. Yeah. I know that there are people who have already pre ordered it because that's the <laughs> It, right you're already that hype for it that you're going to pre-order it mm -hmm. um and my biggest issue for other people is that like the software is far from finished mm -hmm. it's it's microsoft even uh when i was talking to them we're like oh we're planning monthly rollouts of updates to fix a lot of these issues and some of their updates have been effective mm -hmm. but there's just a lot of there's just a lot you'll have to put up with and if you want to pay 13.99 <laughs> to put up with a lot of crap for a device yeah will most likely not be your main phone or your main device. It's really more like a tablet, so it's like a secondary device. Then, yeah, sure. <laughs> if you have the patience and the money <laughs> and the time and, you know, tolerance for clutter, do it. But everyone else is not meant <laughs> to find this. So well, let me just say, how does this make you feel about the Surface Neo, which is the slightly larger Windows version of this concept. Um, I'm still interested in seeing what they do with it, but yeah. I feel like you have more experience than I do with dual screen Windows devices, like the Aces, like the ZenBook Duo things. Sure, sure. I don't have any faith in Windows being a <laughs> friendly dual screen software, but uh, yeah. I think the hardware will be nice. I think it'll be interesting just because, yeah, they're also, they have the like hideout keyboard that's going to be a yeah. part of that, like the keyboard case. I'm I'm intrigued by it, but mostly I love to see companies playing around with hardware like this, even though it's not something I think anybody should buy right now. The fact that yeah. they're experimenting first, here. Yeah. Remember, the first Surface, the Surface RT was a piece of garbage, <laughs> but the concept was good. And over time, I feel like they got to a really interesting point with it. So I'm intrigued and certainly more intrigued than other folding phones. I will definitely say that the Neo's slide out keyboard case gives me a bit more hope that it will actually be a good laptop mode kind of device. Yeah. And yeah. it might actually be pretty nice. So I can't wait till you get to test it and let us know like what that is, what that experience is like. Maybe I'll buy that. I don't know. Mm. Mm. 
Okay, let's cut here while we wait for Matt. We have to three join minutes in. to talk with the live stream audience. We Hello. do, we do. We could do Q and A as we do that. So let's see. What's where up? is your duo, Sherlyn? It is right here, everybody. I have it propped up in that second screen. <laughs> I have our show notes looking at ah. me. So I can, like, pay attention. Can you hold it up to your face since we were talking about how big it is. Like, oh, oh, oh no, yeah. like close it, like as if yeah, you're using it, like phone, a phone mode. Uh, where's the. Hi, Matt. Can you hear me? And Matt Smith is here. Hello, Matt. So uh, I see some people not understanding what I mean for tolerance for clutter. I don't want too many devices laying around at home doing anything. So if you can deal with more than <laughs> one device, go for it. That's what I well, meant. I think by the whole point is it should be your main device. Uh, but, it should yeah. be, but it can't be. Um, in my opinion. Like it just, I mean, it can. If Again, if you're very patient and you're mm -hmm. a huge fan who's already very hype about this thing, go for it. And there are people who will like there are yeah. people who are really diehard fans that would do buy this no matter what and it's fine live your life bro it's totally fine and for the live stream uh our uk bureau chief matt smith has joined us yeah. in his in his kitchen i think so he may be chiming in soon we'll yeah. talk about xbox <laughs> yeah brilliantly is this the preamble for everyone this is the preamble for because we just finished the duo segment so now we're just doing q a we're just doing interacting with the um <laughs> with the uh, audience yeah. I mean, Devendra, do you want to take that? XPS 13. Just go go XPS 13. Come on. <laughs> Either get this year's or get last year's, but get the XPS 13. Most, also, I think most laptops I've reviewed recently all have pretty decent backlit keyboards. Yeah. Um, some of them, some I feel like HP has been all, like their backlighting has bad uh, gradations like sometimes it's bright sometimes mm -hmm. it's like not bright enough That's true the but, levels are not equal yeah. steps up yeah but in terms of build in terms of everything like come on get a get you could get last year's xps 13 it's still a great computer and you could get it for laptops years. were pretty nice too depending on they're fine they're i i think their bezels are too too archaic for today like they okay. really need to cut those bezels down yeah it looks like someone was asking what mic i'm using is an audio technica at 2020 2020 that was so my first microphone from back in the day. Maybe beginner mic. <laughs> um, what's different between the Surface Duo and the Galaxy Z Fold 2? Uh, the Galaxy Z Fold 2, for one thing, has an external screen that's 6.1 inches um, mm -hmm. wide, I guess, and uh, diagonally. And it's very long, but you, you can do more things on it, at least with on the outside screen. And then if you open up that uh, screen, there's no hinge in the middle. It's a foldable screen. So yeah, there's no hinge, but it's also more prone to breakage. And you can't use a stylus with the Galaxy Z Fold 2, whereas you can use a Surface Pen with the Surface Duo. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And also the people who are like, we hate this. Uh, you guys hate this phone. Do read the other reviews. We're not the only really? one. <laughs> No, yeah, and also more than we do. So I'm intrigued by unique hardware. So as soon as Sherlyn is done playing with it, like I want her to send it to me so I can play with it at home and check out these updates. So I'm not, I'm not fully, you know, I haven't given up on this device, but certainly not something anybody should buy. I feel like that's our main takeaway. And yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, back to like definitely sending it right back to you. Instagram is, <laughs> is a garbage app that doesn't work on any platform. That's that's really what it is. People were a little annoyed that we weren't responding to the comments during our recording. And I think some do that. people yeah. want to understand that we're actually recording for a podcast right now. And then when we have breaks like we're doing now, we get to answer questions. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Trey, for uh, explaining and uh, what the situation is. Thanks, everybody. Any any other like duo questions before we dive into Xbox? A little. Yeah. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> what that folding? That, that, that folding and the way it opens up is super good. Yeah. So I'll show you how, I mean, we couldn't show people things like software before. So I'm going to show mm -hmm. people what that looks like. So when you're switching an app between screens, I think to me, the easiest way to do it is to open the recent apps and then just flick it to the screen that you want to add. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also kind of just do this. So mm -hmm. I did receive a software update on September 5th that made this a lot better. But before that, 
like if you try to move an app to another screen it would just disappear like the ghosting the ghosting that like you see just now with the screen highlighted it would happen but when i let go of the app on the right screen it would disappear so yeah. that was that was a problem and then what else can i show you? i'll show you two things side by side i'll show you like youtube on here um and it's nice it's nice to have I really liked having YouTube on one side and Twitter on the other. Really just like, yeah. yeah and that sort of multitasking that. is nice. And depending yeah. on what your dominant side is, uh, you will use that screen more. So like, I mm -hmm. use the right screen for like actively engaging and then left screen for like distracting things like Twitter or whatever, or messages from my friends. Here's a uh, question. Let's say like it does. Yes. Yes. You, it's just like Android. It would happen on any phone that yeah. like one of either one of them would stop playing or I mean I haven't done mm -hmm. that on the phone. Um, but but the Spotify has good. Uh, they actually customize it for dual screen. So if you full screen Spotify, you'll get like album art on album one side, art. or you'll get like video like video clips. That's as it's also because Spotify is a better tablet app. Spotify right? like, is the only good Android tablet app. <laughs> Spotify yeah. and New York Times. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the people, six more uh, questions. We're waiting for Matt to come back in. I think his video no, got messed up. Just trying to make sure uh, we got some of the questions sorted out. Uh, yeah, got any questions to call out, Ben? Because I knew you were looking yeah. at those. It doesn't. It's just people were commenting that like either some people are like, "How did Microsoft like re release such a such an unfinished product?" That's fair. There's also people who are like, uh, "Oh, yeah. why don't we let someone more open-minded uh, review this product?" I'm, I, I'm very open-minded. Again, <laughs> read all the other reviews. We're not alone. People forget that like first-gen products, the first iPhone, the very, very first iPhone was buggy and slow. It didn't have 3G. It didn't have open apps. Like it was not a great experience. It was just like a nice, it was like, hey, this is a cool looking device that has potential. And you saw where the potential led, but even Apple didn't have the app store originally. I mean, again, everything, Microsoft is trying to do a very new thing here. Like, yeah, even, even yeah. if dual screen devices have been around for a while, this is another attempt and this is a newer attempt. And it is understandable that a lot of these issues come up. But if no one calls them out, they're never going to get fixed. Like, what do you think? <laughs> like, you, we want ultimately for the user to have a good experience. Like, mm -hmm. reviewing this as a person who's going to try to use this in their daily life. And if it's frustrating and I don't say that, then I'm not doing a service to my reader. Yeah. Or my yeah. Reader. That's, that's really how it goes. Like, guys, you want these companies to release bad products and then you have to buy them and live with them. Like, that's this is helping you, this is making them better. Is criticism. It's the classic case of I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's and how and I often am. the original Galaxy <laughs> Fold was not great, but then all of the shit happened. And then the new fold, the Z Fold 2, looks so mm -hmm. much better. And so, this is not this is not even a disaster on the level yeah, of the original right. fold, right? Like that was a prototype <laughs> that they tried to do. Like we we have a we have again, we have a like a little chat group with all the a lot of the reviewers in the industry. <laughs> so we were exchanging ideas. Collusion? One, what? No, it's just like, like, are you also experiencing this bug? Yeah, I'm experiencing this mm -hmm, bug. So mm -hmm. it's a widespread problem. Okay. And uh, one of the, the reviewers in that group chat was like saying that uh, the software is so broken, I can't recommend it or whatever. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's, I was like, no, the software is broken, but it works. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's buggy, but it works for the most part. And I was, we were comparing the fold to the duo. And I said that the, the, Fold's hardware, OG Fold, original Galaxy Fold, hardware was broken. In this case, the Duo's software is broken. In either case... I think the Fold software was broken, too. Like, everything was broken. The Fold software yeah. was, like, not broken. It was more that, like, full-screen apps just weren't great and app continuity didn't work as well as it needed to or it does not <laughs> to be. Um, but, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. we just... Just take it. Don't don't get mad when you read the angry, the bad reviews because all of us get mad at Microsoft people. Get yeah. mad at the company making the bad. So things. I have a really good question. That yes, we didn't hit during the segment. Um, a question from Caleb. Um, he's saying, you know, I hate to ask this because I don't want to hear any anything more bad about a, a device I've been excited about for a year. But tell us about the battery. Mm -hmm. So the battery life is, uh, like I said in my review, actually impressive for a device that's basically two phones. Uh, it generally sticks around for longer than a day. So like I will fully charge it the night before, unplug it at that night, and then the next day it still lasts throughout until at night again. So pretty much a day. 
um, and I'm doing things like opening apps, uh, opening apps, of course I'm opening apps. <laughs> I'm doing things like, so I played like, I think eight straight hours of solitaire nonstop, more or less. And it was so fine. Um, I, I have questions, Sherlyn, about just solitaire, about, about, about everything. Life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to oh, the other thing I want to point out is that the surface earbuds do not stay in your ears. Where the processor is, yeah. uh, it runs hot a little bit. It, it runs warm when it's doing pretty much nothing. It at does all. get warm. Yeah. And that's fine. It doesn't never get like so hot that it will burn you. But uh, th- I mean, if you're concerned when you're using it, you will feel that it's warm. Uh, that is also <laughs> did, that just- go, <laughs> did that go in the review share? It doesn't get so <laughs> hot that it burns you. No, I said it's something that was searingly hot. No, uh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's kind of understandable because this thing is so thin. It's really very thin. I'd rather it be thin than chunky, thin and slightly warm than chunky and cool. Yeah, sure. I mean? that's how you sure. like him. Uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what does taking okay. a phone call look like? So I'm just gonna like show you what it looks like right now. But mm-hmm. it's, it's not gonna look like the white back. It's gonna show you this. Yeah, you're gonna do that. Yeah. I'm gonna this, it's right? so big. It's a, it reminds me of when we first saw the the Galaxy Note, and we were like, "Are you yeah. just putting a tablet on your head?" Yeah. Can you show from the like the front profile of it, like all the way on your face? Can you okay, put it so next to your face? Face. Yeah. Put phone on face. Yeah. Like like here or somewhere. No, no, like to the side. <laughs> yeah. Like, That's like what that, I'm yeah. No, no, like put the broad open side. screen that way. Yeah. No, wow. no, no. Broadside <laughs> the phone. <laughs> This is this, this is, is a file of failure of a live stream. Why do this, Sherlyn. Do, do this. Just do this. For the, I wish I had my phone. Do this. Yeah, like that. That. Do this. Hold it like that. This no. Is <laughs> <laughs> do what Deb's doing. Do, Deb, okay, do we got to move on. We got to okay. move on okay. at some point. <laughs> Uh, I'm, yeah, uh, I just want to make sure we get pretty much everyone's question. So it feels like everyone's fine. I think. If it's again for those people who have second devices, people are learning. If you want a second device, this is fine. This is actually a very nice thin second device. But if this is like someone that's insane, that's everything. insane. Come on, though, the whole point of this thing is to be your all in one. I'm your big screen, I'm your phone, right? So it will, it will do those phone things, it will do them just like if yeah. you're into smartphone photography. <laughs> sorry, bro, no, sorry, uh, bro, like sorry, it's not going to work. The camera is nowhere near the in the leaks of like recent smartphones, but go for it if you really really want to try it out i think there are people who will spend money on something like that all right well i think we're gonna move on to xbox and let's just make sure yes. matt a real good video is matt recording? yeah everything's you, good. are you recording locally matt i am recording locally Beth. thank you beautiful oh i need to open the show notes on this thing again hey <laughs> <laughs> open your show notes fingerprint sensor is nice by the way in case it helps anyone that's on fine this. yeah it's it's easy to reach it's funny because the Windows Hello sensors have been so good in PCs yeah, for so long. Like for it to, yeah, yeah. But the one not. time it'd be great on a phone. Oh well. But it didn't have room. They don't have room for those cameras. I don't mm-hmm. think. Before we move on, I did want to note that I am wearing a shirt for the first time in several months, just for this <laughs> podcast. You know that. All right. Oh, I'm so we get to go. <laughs> just sitting here sweating. Are, it's are because you you're in front of your windows. Do you mean that in, in terms room. of like a button-down shirt, or are you just full-on Tarzaning for the last three months? Um, no, no, not full on. <laughs> I mean, having said that, like I'm, you know, I mean, I'm wearing slacks. I'm being well-behaved, but I am barefoot. Um, that's, a, that's how you roll. That is how that's, you roll. That's okay. a very different in gadget podcast, Matt's feed. Mm-hmm. That's a completely different. Yeah. Matt's feed. I listened to the one Matt. with you and Sherlyn and. It's just yeah, like, that got a little bit. Okay, we are okay, let's collect yes. ourselves. Yeah, let's collect and... ourselves and move on to Xbox and not Matt's feet. Not Matt's feet. Wow. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> okay, enough about dual screen phones. Let's talk about, I don't know, some big honking console hardware. This week, we finally got the launch details of the Xbox Series S and the Series X. Well, first of all, Microsoft confirmed that the Series S existed after a... Uh, a bit of a leak earlier this week, which I don't know if that was planned or not, because it certainly like spurred on excitement from a lot of people. So like, what was it, Monday night or Tuesday night, we had learned that, you know, the Series S leaked out, it exists. It looked like a very small thing. The price leaked out, it was $299. And eventually Microsoft confirmed everything. So the Series S and X are launching on November 10th. And the Series S is... 299. So to me, that is super interesting, especially more as we learn more about what it can do 
because we've been talking about this Xbox Series X for a very long time. The Series S is an entirely new piece. So joining us to discuss all this is our UK Bureau Chief, Matt Smith. Matt, how's it going? Hey, thanks for having me on again. Um, yep, I promise to behave this time around. I'm doing well. I don't know. Actually, like I'm doing okay, Matt, but I just realized I just invited the world's biggest uh, Sony PlayStation fanboy (laughs) to Uh, talk about the Xbox. On the BBC, they call this balance. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's the funny thing. So like this, you know, I'm I'm one of these people that kind of has to be won over. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not blind. This is like... (laughs) Wait, so then I'm the group, right? Because I don't know anything about either. Like, so yeah, the, you're the solitaire fanatic <laughs> of the joint. I want the Nintendo Switch. No, but I do. I mean, that price, two ninety nine for the mm. series, that sounds really mm-hmm. good, and I am uh, intrigued. I might buy it, but mm-hmm. what do I get for that price? Well, let me yeah, let me run down. So the Series S is a device targeting 1440p at 60 frames per second, which is that's notable because I, I think like the Xbox uh, One X, which is the highest end Xbox One that they launched, that was really good for 1080p at 60 FPS. Sometimes it got up to 4K, but 1440p, 60, that means really sharp resolution. Some 1440p monitors out there, this will be really good for. But for people with older TVs and even with people uh, for people with 4K sets, 1440p upscaled to 4K still looks pretty damn good. And 60 FPS means it'll look smooth on most screens, but also it supports up to 120 frames per second. So for the newer 4K sets with higher refresh rates, like the the new LG OLEDs, you'll get even smoother gameplay. And to me, that's really impressive that they managed to squeeze this amount of hardware in there. It uses the same super fast SSD technology that um, the Xbox Series X is going to have. Uh, It has most of the things you'd want from the Series X. There's even hardware ray tracing, although I don't, I can't imagine they can really do too much with that tech at such a low price point. Um, But it has so much. And I think for most people, you'll notice faster load times because of that hard drive. You'll notice smoother gameplay because you're actually hitting 60 FPS and not like some weird 30 frames per second, 1080. So I think for a lot of people, this is going to be a good upgrade. Matt, what do you think right now? Because this is competing with the PlayStation 5. And the only, we know there's going to be a disc PlayStation 5, the full one, and discless, but they're still basically the same machine, right? Yeah, they're still going to have the same graphical hardware inside. That's what's so intriguing here. They're two very yeah. different propositions from Xbox. And I kind I mean, we're going, I'm going back to really basic things here, but I really like how the Series S looks. Like, it looks yeah, like some kind cute. of European speaker electronics thing that plays CDs or some other yesteryear physical media. <laughs> It looks sure, really attractive. Cool. I really like it. I think, I think like, it looked really nice, like on my TV table console stand thing. Um, yeah, it's very attractive looking. And it, although it does look like uh, a drive-through speaker, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- it looked like it looked like a system with a solar panel on top. Which, hey, give me give me infinite sun-powered gaming. Yeah, right. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if you could string them together like two <laughs> Series S's equals a Series X or something? Mm, that's that's the future. That's where we're yeah. headed. But yeah, Microsoft showed off like this thing is basically half the size of a Series X. It looks like it's a cute little it's a cute little thing. Ooh, They're calling cool. it the smallest Xbox ever made. If you look <laughs> at the if you look at the controller even next to it, it looks yeah. like basically the width of two Xbox controllers, not even two Xbox controllers. So it is, yeah, it's it's impressive. And I'll just say, like, for that price, $299 for essentially a next gen experience, that's impressive because really it's only Nintendo that's been hitting that and their hardware, like yeah. the Switch. The Switch isn't like the fastest hardware around. What was cool about the Switch was the portability and everything. So there's that. And also, this is going to be part of Xbox All Access. So in 12 countries, you can basically lease this over two years. And, um, it's 25 bucks a month, but that includes Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and we're going to get really confusing here. Wow. And Game Pass Ultimate brings in, that normally costs 15 bucks a month, and that includes the Game Pass game subscription service, but also Xbox Live, which is multiplayer. I think I'd either gone to bed or checked out mentally from work by the time that the pricing of the financing. I didn't know it included Game Pass. That's, uh... that's the whole point, right? Yeah, so, that's yeah. Uh, spicy tamale. Does it have to include Game Pass because there's no discs with it? or, or well, like- well, okay, so yeah, this is a discless machine. It doesn't have to include Game Pass, but I will say as somebody who's been, I did that crazy deal uh, a couple of years ago where you could basically pre-order ahead three years of Xbox uh, Game Pass Ultimate. Um, it is worth 
paying for it because it's normally it's 15 bucks a month. You get over like a hundred games to play. Um, and if you're like me, you can't always like find time to play the newest games. It's really nice to just have a library of good yeah. games to jump into. Also every new Microsoft game. So everything, the Halo, Forza, whenever a new Microsoft game launches, it is on Game Pass. So at one point I just had, I thought to myself, why am I paying 60 bucks for Forza Horizon 4, right? Or three, I forget which one it was. Um, why am I picking 60 bucks for that when that could pay for four months of Game Pass and I'll have the same game? And I think that's the value proposition there. And that's more valuable to Microsoft than just buy people buying consoles because that's consistent membership. That is, you know, that's somebody who's going to be paying for years rather than buying a thing and walking away, maybe buying one game like people used to in some consoles. So I know there's a ton of value here. Matt, any further thoughts, Sherlyn? I, I might buy it. I don't know. I'm thinking I might buy it because... <laughs> Affordable is only a hundred dollars more than my Switch, more or less, and it's that Xbox Game Pass thing sounds like a good way to try more games for me because that's one reason I don't try a lot of games on the Switch is because each of them are fifty dollars. I'm just like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I'm I'm intrigued, but maybe I should wait for a PS Five. I don't know, Matt. Convince I don't, me. Yeah. So yeah, Davindra, why are you anti PlayStation then? I'm not the anti PlayStation. Yeah. I just think it's uh it's fine. It's uh so here's the thing. I normally end up getting both systems, so nobody can say I'm a fanboy for one thing. See, that's but... the thing though, but I think that's the that's the crux of the matter though, isn't yeah. it? Because you you kind of I get the Xbox is a bargain and then with the game yeah. you know, with a game pass, it makes so much sense on so many levels. It makes sense for Microsoft because they're getting, like you said, sustained income. And for gamers, you get so many games, like so many you get games. them on launch. But if you think of like the most amazing games, I'll I'll give Microsoft Flight Simulator, but barring <laughs> Flight Simulator, everything else that's been exciting, arguably in console gaming, like again, ignore Nintendo, but all mm -hmm. the big hitters have been PlayStation 4. Well, so like, it's they're doing very different things, right? Like yeah. Sony, I think, has banked on the big budget, huge profile games, Last of Us 2, right? Uh, the Uncharted series, Spider-Man, God of War, like... Yeah, it goes, Tony goes Shima, big. Final Fantasy VII, Last yeah. of Us 2. Yeah, th th those Sony are like, goes big. <laughs> I mean, Davindra in Slack earlier, I think <laughs> earlier this week, he said, what, is there not enough anime games for you, Matt, on the yep. Xbox? And I was like, well, that's kind of true, yeah. But it's the main totally thing is, true. give me one ninja. I mean, just give yeah. me a game that kind of tickles my fancy on the Xbox and... Yeah, I mean, the Series S just looks like such good value. Mm -hmm. And um, a quick point I would like to make, isn't it amazing that perhaps in 2021 we'll have a new Nintendo Switch that will cost more than a current generation Xbox? Ooh, that'll that be weird. I do feel like Nintendo, even if they do release a new Switch next year, it would still be four, 300. Like, I feel like they would stick yeah. with that rather than go higher. But because also their hardware is always a like at least a generation behind. So the stuff Nintendo buys is cheaper and not as... You know, not as crazy pricey yeah. as what Microsoft and Sony are doing. I'll say, yeah, to your point, Matt, like I I turn on my PlayStation when there is that big game to play, like when I want to go through Spider-Man, when I want to go through God of War. But I do spend most of my time back in the Microsoft ecosystem because uh, Xbox has a lot of indie games that I often end up jumping into because I like to spend time in Game Pass. Um, and I don't want to just go, I don't buy too many new games because it's uh it's expensive and it gets crazy. And uh, I also have a PC. And I think Game Pass becomes even more of a value on the PC side because Game Pass Ultimate includes Game Pass for PC, which has some games. Um, I think, what is it? Crusader Kings 3, which people are really hyped into right now. That's a hot new game coming out. Yeah. The PC gets that stuff as part of the Windows Store, as part of Game Pass. So there's just a huge value there. And that's kind of where I like to spend a lot of my time. But I, I will say like, I'm not down PlayStation 5. I do think the game of chicken both of these companies have been playing has been kind of weird because, yeah, we're... It's we're, unprofessional, yeah, I think, for just, us as it's, journalists. It's a, little, it's a little iffy. I mean, there's a whole new console here that just exists now this week, even though it's launching in two months. That is kind of wild to me. So Sony's pricing, I think, is really where a lot of my judgment on the PlayStation 5 is going to come in. I don't think they can go past $499, especially yeah, since yeah. we know... The hardware underneath it, even though it's very similar to the Xbox Series X, it is not as powerful as the Series X. So they, ca I can't see how they could justify costing more. Uh, the real question is where the diskless PlayStation 5 is going to be. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to be like at most 50 bucks less. I can't imagine they would say Ooh. $400 just by, yeah. you know, 
four hundred dollars is a pretty big one. If I managed to or wanted to sacrifice and hit three fifty with a disc mm. list, then that's a win for Sony. Yeah. Um, but this is the I company mean... that launched the six hundred dollar PlayStation Three. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But then they learned their lesson for the PlayStation 4. You know, I, I wonder like how much wiggle room now they know the Xbox yes. price. How much wiggle room does Sony and PlayStation have? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's something like just some high power. I will say, I, I, I think they're all going to be losing money on this because we've been looking yeah. at this hardware for a while. Um, we just saw NVIDIA's RTX 3000 GPUs get announced. We know AMD stuff isn't coming. Based on what we know so far, the Xbox Series X's hardware to do that in a PC, like to get a next generation SSD, the SSD alone will cost you 200 bucks. You know, a good GP will cost you at least three or 400 bucks. So once you put that PC together, that's a $1,000 machine. It is certainly impressive to get that amount of power within a $500 console. Um, so the hardcore gamers, that's where they're gonna go is the $500 machines. I think for everybody else, the $300 Series S, that thing is just a crazy good deal. You know, especially as people are out of work or you, they don't have as many hours as they used to. Um, if you want a new system for your kids, it makes so much sense to just spend 25 bucks a month, get this console, get a whole bunch of games. So you're not always constantly buying games. I'm, I mean, Sherlyn, yeah. you might be the right example of the kind of person now that you're kind of getting into your gaming. Oh. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, for Game Pass, yes. But I was going to ask you, Matt, like what titles from either the Xbox or the PlayStation uh, libraries do you think I would enjoy? Well, so I don't Fall, play a lot of first person shooter things. No, nor do I. Fall Guys is on both, I think. Mm -hmm. Right? You can what? play on Xbox, but it came well, on I PlayStation. I don't want to be dumb well. and be like, what's Fall Guys? I know the name and I know it's right. Hype. So it's amazing. <laughs> it's like, God, I sound like the cliche that we like, you like to joke about. <laughs> it's like a Japanese <laughs> game show. You oh. run it. You're like, it's like 60 players. I think 60 players are all yeah. plonked at the front of a racing line. And then it's like an obstacle course. But all you can like do is really jump. American Gladiators show. A little bit, but even lamer. You just get this little <laughs> jelly bean. You really can't do much. You can jump, you can run, you can kind of oh, dive. God. But the dive is pretty much useless. Can I, okay. Can I play that on uh, something other than the Xbox or PS4? You can or play on PC. Time? Yeah, play it on PC. Yeah. Play it, I, I think it's on Steam. It, PC, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the kind they could definitely do it on Steam. Um, it came from Devolver, so we played it like I think two or three years ago. There's a PC uh, release. And I will say, like the integrated graphics in newer, even newer laptops, were saying you could play a simple game like that pretty easily. Yeah. I'll yeah. wait till I'm done owning League of Legends, then I'll then I'll move over to Fall <laughs> okay. Guys. Let's just, once I've let's finished just League of Legends, once I've just completed, <laughs> I don't think that game once ends. I, just, uh, yeah, I know. No, it yeah. doesn't. But once I like <laughs> ace all my enemy teams all the time, then we can talk about this. <laughs> Gonna happen but yeah like fall wow. guys is a good one um i'm trying to think what games we exactly like. that's my point is like all the titles y'all listed out aren't titles i'm interested in so maybe i won't buy but it with game pass reason. you have this back catalog that's the benefit yeah. like old games Can I play you... barbie detective mysteries there are things like that there are certainly things like but okay. you have a switch right and i feel like yes, if you just exactly. want indie games the switch is like yeah. Fall Guys yeah. is going to be on the switch eventually like the switch can do that's most true. things that'll so. be a lot of fun there's You're no fine with the switch all I want to do is play Overcooked. Ugh, That's and Solitaire, apparently. And Solitaire. <laughs> wow. Matt, any closing thoughts on this? I just, I feel like I'm excited by it. I don't, I want to see how Sony responds. But I am just gamers. really impressed. I'm really impressed. I think Xbox mm -hmm. has come out really strong with all of this. Like, even though Halo's even, delayed, right? So. I don't care about Halo. <laughs> I don't. I'm not, yeah. I'm not a white teenage American. I do not care about Halo. <laughs> well, I'm white. Well, but say, you know what I mean? The past I was like, three yeah, Halo I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> The past three Halo games have also been a complete waste of time because I don't think 343 has done as good a job as Bungie did with that series. So right. I'm not, if it's delayed, fine. But that is a big hit for Microsoft as a oh, launch title. Sorry, very quickly. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you have a fact check klaxon noise you can throw in, Ben. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Fall Guys isn't on Xbox. Ah, yes. So maybe Sunny that's why I should pl get, consider the PS instead or see if it's on PC. But Just, yeah. just wait and yeah, get it on PC. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what's my other final, clo final closing thoughts? Yeah, like the ball's in Sony's court now. But yeah, Xbox just like came out with this really pervasive pitch. And one thing we didn't quite mention about Game Pass is EA Play. Oh, yeah. Yes. Freaking, freaking EA. EA yeah. Play. A hundred more games. Also, we didn't mention xCloud, which you could play your games yeah. on Android devices. It's like Stadia, but not shitty. I yeah, mean, that's true. Yes. 
actually, Sherlyn, you could just subscribe to Game Pass and play xCloud games on all your Android devices. That's so, what I was thinking. That was going to be my, my Matt life hack for this. Yeah. We're going to yeah. just play play it on um, a Pixel. Yeah, there are a ton of gaming phones that I could probably try it out on. No, you, you don't, don't even need, need a gaming it. phone. It's game really? streaming. Really? A proper controller. No, but what I mean is, I mean is, like, I don't know if, like, well, I guess a flagship phone would be good enough. That's true. Any, Any like, phone. A Note 20 you could, you could get a enough. super cheap, yeah. crappy, like the Pixel 3a or even the Pixel 2, as long as it can stream video. Yeah. It can do game streaming for real. That's like, all it means. Uh, when and the they launched, is fine? it should be. I mean, From when they I launched think, no. the Stadia, like the press kit included the Stadia, I have the, controller, yeah. the little I have that. bracket, and a Pixel 3a. So, you know, that's literally the bare minimum yeah. hardware for Stadia. Oh, for XCloud. This is next year's going to be really wild for gaming. So, uh, I'm excited. It's not just about having the fastest hardware mm -hmm. around, I think that's a good thing for consumers all around, basically. Yep. Yeah. It's really good for phone networks like our parent company. Right. <laughs> oh, good lord! You just had to say. We that. need a chime to play Ching. every time we say. Ching. Matt gets a bonus. Wait, Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> you get cut there. All right. Yep, we got a good cut there. Uh, Thank someone... you, Matt. You want to join us for questions? You want to talk yeah. about Apple? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Let's. Uh, do we uh, have any Xbox questions, live questions before we move now, on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm looking at the chat and uh, someone, uh, Kay Asante, pointed out Overcooked is in Game Pass, which, yes, but I also already bought Overcooked she on three bought. different platforms. So I really got to stop buying Overcooked and just play it where I have it. But I think Game Pass is interesting. For, definitely mm -hmm. sounds like a very interesting way for me to try Even the, It's like the idea of a headless Game Pass, basically, like you're buying Game oh. Pass just for xCloud. Yeah. I'm, people yeah. may end up doing that. Yeah. I just, I really honestly, people just please. <laughs> Please, someone revive or resurrect Barbie Detective Mystery. <laughs> I'm sure you can find better new like, games. Really. No, oh. no, my friends are all like nostalgia thing. Like we're like, oh, we you should probably find me. a way to play that. Yeah. No, there's like old Flash versions of it somewhere, but not great. Mm. Um, there are websites that back other... up Flash games. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of just internal discussion within the chat. Uh, they're they're talking with each other about the specs of the PS versus sure. the Xbox stuff. There's some uh, speculation on PSVR two being maybe like yeah. wireless. I'm seeing uh, a comment that's uh, asking if we can talk about the Xbox Series S support for external drives. Does it strictly support no, Microsoft no. SSD? Or Based on what we see so far, USB it supports, hardware drive? because of the way both the Series S and the X works, they support this add-on expansion card. So from Seagate, it's an SSD. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be super fast, but we don't know the price of that. And I feel like that could be the killer you know, the Achilles heel of the Series S because it has a 512 gigabyte drive built in. Oof. If you want to expand that, you have to add the one terabyte card. That thing could be at least 200 bucks. And at that point, you're getting up to the Series X level of, uh, of price, right? So, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, do you remember when they used to be just iPhones with not enough memory? A few yes, years ago? I do remember that. Very much is a repeat of that mess. And like, yeah. you know, I've got a, I mean, I'm really lazy. So I've got a USB cabled, ssd to my playstation 4 oh same fill, yeah you know, i mean to fill in more games like a one terabyte will not get you anywhere in 2020 it's or 2021 freaking, freaking call yeah, of duty just, on its own takes up yeah. 200 gigabytes warzone <laughs> is another 100 gigabytes so yeah. there's your entire drive you know and i think that's a problem developers need to deal with too because these games don't and remember to it's big. diskless it's diskless, diskless so there is no option it has to go on the bloody thing well everything has to go in. like no games don't stream from discs anymore right this isn't the yeah. playstation 3 era this is an xbox one everything gets installed to the hard drive and mm -hmm. we play the game of uninstalling what you're not playing basically and hoping you can expand that storage so that's gonna be a problem for sure for sure so uh sorry i i didn't mean to interrupt the xbox <laughs> and ps conversation but i was like <laughs> scrolling up a little bit just to see if i didn't leave out any duo questions quickly it does not the surface duo does not fit in the back pockets of the pants i'm wearing right now but i think davindra you were able to fit it in what your front pockets i feel i mean but like giant cargo shorts like the unfashionable right. old navy cargo right. shorts if you're like, wearing yeah, like Mm -mm, these won't uh -uh. fit in the back pocket. Uh, and then there was another question about uh, someone who went to a store and played with it and didn't get split screen to work uh, and asks if it will work in the ones that like ship to consumers. Yes, because the software update that I got fixed that issue mm -hmm. that, again, people that are in stores were also experiencing. So it's yeah. not just reviewers yeah. and me. They're fixing uh, a yeah, lot really stuff. quickly. But I am surprised yeah. that this stuff wasn't fixed by the time it reached reviewers. You know, that's it's also, very obvious again, problems. Yeah, and they've they've had time. So like... 
<laughs> yeah but anyway the more we call it out the more they'll fix it which is good uh i th and then people are asking me about uh, with a case on whether it was more bulky now i did not put the case on but the good news is even without the case on the gorilla glass covering actually protected this thing from a few mm -hmm. falls already like it Ooh, fell off wow. my couch a couple times and there's not a scratch um yeah. but the, the thing does it's get not a case so the bumpers just go around the side yeah, they they're don't just even, to like, protect the like edges yeah right so they they actually won't be that much bulkier um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's all the, I think that's all the questions on the duo set that I didn't get around to just now. Okay. But back to your PlayStation wow. versus Xbox chat. Also, did we lose Ben? Or is no, ben just I'm here. Okay. Ben's Perfect. here. Just <laughs> in the back. I was told we ran out of video. storage space. Yeah, I was told by video to turn my, uh, okay. video off. So I think that might be all in terms of Xbox. We do want right. to do that quick hit on Apple. Matt, do you want to stick around for that or, uh, yeah, I can talk, uh, Apple and, it's yeah, because you know Apple schedule. pretty well. I know that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, hit that when you're ready. Okay. And I'll let you lead the like sure. timing and discussion. I'll do that. On that okay. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So, one thing. No, well, sorry. No, I thought I was leading the section. Uh, are you taking go it? Ahead. You want to take it? Go ahead. Okay. So this week we had Android 11 review go up, uh, Surface Duo reviews go up, Xbox news drop as well. But like, well, as if that wasn't enough, Apple was like, here, let me drop some news. So sure, why not? Apple yeah, sent out invites for its virtual uh, event. It will be happening September 15th. And the graphic that they sent out with the invitation, which usually is a hint as to what is coming, uh, has the words time flies on it and then some squiggles in the background. So wonder what everyone, that could be referring to. We wonder what time flies could mean. But I, I mean, <laughs> it, seems, it seems pretty obvious we might be expecting an Apple Watch. Uh, which to me is interesting because the watch os 7 is still in beta watch os 7 was introduced earlier this year i think in june wow that feels like forever ago um but now we're going to get new hardware it looks like so it'd be interesting to see what apple brings to the table here matt you're an apple watch user are you hype i am i am where am i now i've got my mandalorian strap on oh Ooh, boy. that sounds good i need a new strap <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm on I'm on the Watch OS 7 beta, so I'm glad you mentioned it because like um, yeah, like the sleep tracking, everything mm. sleep based is really good. So before when when I'd wear like my Apple Watch either in bed before I took it off to charge, if I wore it, then I'd be listening to podcasts, kind of try to wind wind down right. And mm -hmm. if you move your arm, mm -hmm. the the digital bezel, the the crown mm -hmm. will rotate, and then suddenly it'll ramp up the volume to the max and just give yourself a heart attack. <laughs> oh god! Now now when it goes into kind of uh, go to bed mode, it kind of locks down the dial, so it doesn't the screen doesn't unlock, the volume doesn't change. That's nice. So it's lots of like tiny little bits like that where them it's making more sense for me to wear the watch in bed. Um, obviously, the Apple Watch charges really fast, so I'm not really missing. Okay. You know, the issue of recharging it in the morning isn't a, a bad thing. I can just do it when I'm popping out to the shower and brushing my teeth. And then mm -hmm. it's pretty much always ready for me to wear. And also it's work from home. So, you know, it's a different life now. Charging your gadgets is completely It's not different. as important, yeah. It's just completely different, different the whole use case. Mm -hmm. And so, the sleep tracking, yeah, sorry. I'll yes. just wrap up the sleep tracking yes, part. Um, yeah, so I haven't really learned much from that, but that's true of literally all sleep tracking. The one no. thing that is making my sleep better, though, is the alarm the apple watch alarm mm -hmm. you can set it's gentle it's, yeah it's so gentle and relaxing mm -hmm. like my body is now tricking itself into believing i'm waking up naturally because i can't feel it <laughs> is it does it buzz and vibrate slowly to yeah wake up? So it's, but it's like a, you know it's just like a it's like it's like mm -hmm. a a parent going come on it's time to wake up now wake up you have like some asmr dream, wake yeah. up yeah, i have been thing. using in the new ios which which ios is it 13 now the beta 14 is the beta yeah, i think 14 I think yeah they have the same wake up features and that is that has been my favorite wake up alarm for the past year or so yeah so i was yeah, going to say fun. matt sorry is is the mm. i generally don't like wearing anything on my wrist mm -hmm. bed and that's why i had issues with say the galaxy watch 3 which i recently reviewed which has better sleep tracking now too um and that watch was chunky so were you was it comfortable for you to wear the apple watch to bed is this something you didn't do before yeah. and now you do so yeah i've never had really an issue with the bands yeah. annoying me but i always wear either fabric or those quite cozy uh apple plastic ones they have a mm. they have a really you know, one. Pretend, yeah mm. they have a pretentious word for it but i can't remember what it is <laughs> yeah i find them uh really comfortable i i forget i have it on a lot of the time until like okay the runs out. but yeah um I, especially with these kind of stretchy i know it's only really for the youtube stream oh, but with, ASMR. These, 
Oh yeah, sorry. There you go. Velcro or? Mm. Yeah, Velcro. Wait a minute. Ready? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I should not. Have, can can I do it without me making the creep noise? Yes. It's time. To All right, we gotta oh, stop. Shit. This is getting. This, we keep doing up. this during the show. Okay, let's do. Yeah. <laughs> In short, yeah. Um, I didn't feel it when I was sleeping. But um, have you used an Apple Watch much? Yeah. Not very it's much. High- no. It might be worth trying one, especially with series. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I, I am getting one in a little bit um, because again, as our main wearables person, I need to have a good uh, like good knowledge of all of it. And Chris Velasco is giving me one. It's just it's been it, we've said that he's going to get me one for years, and he still hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> where we're at. Wow, um, I, I'd um, be interested to hear your opinion, Cher. Um, well, yeah. I'm already just looking at what um, other reviewers have said of the WatchOS 7 beta that the sleep tracking doesn't seem as uh, in-depth or insightful as mm. uh, Fitbit or even Samsung's new one. Yeah, because they're just getting started, rate, right? Yeah. Exactly. They're looking it's at very light. To, mm-hmm. yeah, to tell what zone of sleep you're in. And to me, that's actually a little bit more helpful because I, I, I have seen the Watch 3 measure up in terms of noting if I've been in REM or deep sleep. And mm-hmm. deep sleep is just so much more restorative and helpful for your body overall. So I, to me, that's important. But then again, yeah. I don't want to wear a watch to bed. So it doesn't yeah. really matter that much. I, I don't blame you. We talked a bit about this a couple of yeah. weeks ago, too. D- is there any new hardware like you guys are looking forward to with the next so, Apple Watch? Yeah. On the next Apple Watch, I don't know what you think, uh, Matt, but I suspect they're going to catch up to the rest of the industry and add things like blood oxygen monitoring. I'm sure. not sure if it already does. I don't think mm-hmm. so. But they did start the ECG uh, trend. So yes. now I... I think there's something else they're going to do with heart rate variancing or, or, or irregularities. A feature which has saved lives. So, hey, yeah. that's good. Tech. Saved yeah. Chris Velasco's life. Mm-hmm. Did it? Uh, it did. He. I'll tell you later. But, Matt, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> In terms of okay, hardware, like another he forgot the brief at one point. Yeah, it was tough. That's another crime to put against Apple. They saved Chris Velasco's life. Yeah, that's their fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's alive because of them. Apple. Is there anything else we can expect from this event, too? Because I feel like this time is like, where, where, where's my 5G iPhone? What's yeah. Up? So a lot of people were thinking this might be the iPhone event, but then mm-hmm. uh, based on the invitation, it seems more like the watch event and maybe an iPad because there's some scribbles in the background. Sure. <laughs> maybe a Mac. I hate how we have to read the tea leaves for the stupid thing. Like, <laughs> Maybe Take it to church, spread some holy I mean, water on it. Vindra, what, what... You were looking for new hardware, so maybe you know, yeah. next Apple Watch Series 6. Vindra comes hardware. Stylus. Hardware. Vindra hardware. Oh my god, a stylus, <laughs> stylus. on a watch. Ooh, Your baby stuff is stylus. 5G like watch? Like a James Bond stylus <laughs> yeah. mm, that like retracts. Is also uh, an animation oh needle. Yeah. It comes out of the digital crown. You pull it out. <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, in all yes. seriousness, the last gen, fifth gen, was barely a de- like there wasn't a design refresh because uh, the fourth the series, series five, yeah. was the big one. So yeah. six yes. series yeah. is the one where Maybe. we're expecting some actual hardware changes too. Right. Maybe it, it's yeah. over and a better, mm. better, better battery life. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'd love a bit. Of, I'm sure there's going to be battery life improvements. The rumor is, well, almost very likely that due to the beta that doesn't support it, um, there's not going to be a force touch anymore. So you're not going to have mm. that hard touch. So that's one thing out. So that means more space I for really battery. really like force touch, man. I'm, fi- I'm also <laughs> fine with just holding, like force touch and holding for more than half a second are equivalent to me. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't miss it too much. Um, the other thing is maybe they, they'll, uh, from some of the rumors, but I don't really believe them too much, they might completely redesign the digital crown. Did you hear about mm. this? Yeah. Mm. Uh, not yet. I actually haven't seen those rumors. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised because Samsung's spinning bezel is doing really well. Mm. Um, and the digital crown, with interacting with the Watch OS 7 interface, it d- just looks like it's t- difficult. Like you had to do a lot of rotating. It's, yeah, it's never been good. I wonder if they'll get rid of the crown, but like have some kind of like a a swipey sensitive thing where you right. can just kind of... It might make... Yeah. That's, I, I, this is all speculation at this point. Um, so we don't really know. I do want to point out that like uh, there's some other speculation and rumors going around about a second event in September or maybe a few weeks later uh, that will more likely be the iPhone launch event. And oh, okay. People, yeah, okay. people were saying, uh, according to some rumors, that instead of happening in the usual September timeframe, the iPhone event might happen later in October instead hmm. because of COVID-related production delays. Okay. That's... That's I just rumor. I just want to take a vacation, guys. Give me a week I where I can just like run away. It's Dude, not I, oh, I I I already. <laughs> 
admitted that I'm not going to take a break until Thanksgiving. Like this is what's going to happen. Ooh, how um, it goes. Anyway, like anything else? else? Yeah, I, people on the podcast should know that there is also a live stream chat that we refer to during the show. And people in the chat are saying that Blood Oxygen apparently is on the um, Apple Watch Series 5, but no blood pressure yet, it seems. Yes, that sounds about right. Blood pressure is something that uh, Samsung intri- like said it was going to do with the Galaxy Watch 3. And it is going to be in Korea, but it's pending regulatory approval here. In and it the requires US. a strap. Too. like it requires exactly an actual it requires thing. calibration with a blood pressure cuff so anyway we don't know what apple is going to do but apple might be able to exert more pressure on things like the fda to All get right. that working sounds good well we'll see we'll see more about apple next week because we all scramble to cover <laughs> Yeah, More next week's podcast news. will be all about Apple for sure. Oh boy, yeah, it will be. And also be sure to check out um, after the Apple event, we'll be doing a live stream just like this too. So it'll be me and Chris Velasco chatting about all the Apple news. So be sure to tune in for that. Matt Smith, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Sorry I was uh, a bit late. It's all no, right. No, you were fine. <laughs> and also uh, dear listeners and viewers, if you enjoy hearing Matt's beautiful British voice, you can also tune in and check out uh, the Engadget Morning Edition, which is a daily news show featuring our very own Matt Smith. That's that's how I wake up, actually. That is my wake-up alarm. Your gentle wake-up? Yeah, it's Matt Smith. <laughs> oh, Matt reading you the news. Yeah, Matt Smith's like, ASMR, wake up. Oh my wake, God. Up. wake up, wake up, wake up. There wake was up. some Apple news up. overnight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wake up, think about work immediately. I think we're done with this segment. <laughs> yeah, we are. And we're I done. just want to be like, I just saw what Trey G on the chat said, damn it, Trey, you, got, you tripped me up. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> All good. All right, Matt, you are good to go. Um, save your audio and ship it to you, Ben. You can send it over Slack or we transfer or whatever. Cool. He's Ben um, Elman. On. Yeah. Cool. I will do so. Thanks very much for having me. And I'll thank you, Matt, from this chat. And I'll see you in Slack. Talk to Bye, you guys. Matt. Yep. Bye. 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 Do you want to answer uh, some we, questions? We'll, I, yeah, we'll let me run questions. to the bathroom and okay. I will let you do this. Sure. Matt, you can answer questions if you want, Matt. If you I want. mean, I don't really like to interact with people. Um, <laughs> I think I think I'm going to have to go. I'm afraid. Okay. I've got to do yeah. okay. actual actual other grown up work. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Well, thank All you right. for having me. Uh, Treji, it's totally okay. Uh, some questions in the chat. Someone asked if I did get to use uh, Xbox Game Game Streaming on the Surface Duo uh, and Stadia. No, I didn't get around to that. Uh, I mean, again, the vendor would be like shouting at me for not trying Xbox Game Pass. And, and playing hours of solitaire instead but i really focus on more like multitasking use cases and there's a lot of testing to do in the very like so many different modes um that i didn't have time for that but i will try it in a little bit um d man hello for joining thanks for joining us again uh you're waiting for blood pressure monitor not just blood oxygen yeah i think blood pressure might be more helpful to most people than blood oxygen because blood oxygen feels like a more athletic centric uh metric I don't know. Seems like the sort of thing that only people, only the scientists at the that Gatorade <laughs> lab, you know, where they like put the the flight, you know, like the fighter pilot mask oh, on Lord. you, and it's like, how much yeah. oxygen I, and carbon dioxide <laughs> are you exchanging? Are you sweating I, yeah. purple yet? I do mean uh, I do see that like whenever we go to a doctor nowadays in the clinic, I mean not nowadays, but like in the past few years, mm-hmm. they do also measure your blood oxygen. I think with that thing they clip onto your finger, but I could be wrong. Not very oh sure yeah, that is also about. like a blood O2 thing. And yeah. there are a ton of other gadgets that yeah. do the same thing. Like there are bl- there are um, Bluetooth O2 yes. level things. Yeah. I don't know okay, too I much think... about them. I'm not a yeah. health tech person, but... There was, there was a time when like really old uh, Galaxy S flagships tried to use like a laser flash on their cameras to look at your blood, like look through the veins or something. I remember like something weird like that way back when, but maybe they're using that tech now on a wearable or something. Who knows? Uh, Want to say thanks to James Anderson for joining and who has to leave now. Um, we've got You're just so people nice commenting, absolutely right? Absolutely everyone in the chat. It's, hmm? it's you're so nice to ev- absolutely everyone in the chat. It's very inspiring. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see why not. <laughs> They're taking time out to hang out with us today, so it's nice True. for them to be here. Even if the ones who decided to join us today were a little critical of the things we said, I think it's they did still take time out to be with us. So 
That's nice of them, I guess. It's part of a healthy dialogue. So uh, yes. did you see that comment about uh, Apple needing to, possibly needing to put new CPUs and yeah, iPads? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it will come out soon enough. I think, again, one of the hints that we're expecting, or one of the hints was that we might see new tablets or new iPads. So it would be pretty cool. Ooh, uh, there's some comments about rings. I, wa- I don't think Apple's going to launch a smart ring. Although if I'm wrong, holy crap. But I don't think Apple is going to launch a smart ring this uh, month. Um, but the Aura ring did get some pretty decent reviews. I tried one out. I didn't. I I am dubious that like accurate technology can fit into something that small. But you know, who knows? So I saw an interesting comment a little while ago that said something like, "Apple is yes, it's a technology company, but it's also a fashion company, kind of <laughs> like you know." Uh, I mean, the, the whole. That's Johnny, kind of their thing. Yeah, the whole Johnny the ethos, yes. era, the ethos of it. And so, like, I don't know, if they really wanted to lean into that, maybe they would do a smart ring, but that seems like um, the sort I... of thing that they might do one generation of and then forget about. They're, I think they're less likely to do that with something like hardware. I think Apple sees itself as sort of a luxury brand, so they do things like the Apple Card or <laughs> Apple Health. That's sort of like service slash... Um, sometimes hardware but with hardware they're very selective i think about what they actually do um and which is why they're very behind people so i don't know i i still don't think a ring is something apple would do hmm. um they or, or if they did they wouldn't beat anyone major to it they would wait no, till the, their the thing we're waiting for is the air glasses which we know yeah, enough rumors that are, those are in the works that is the yeah. next gen technology we're kind of leading towards so that would make more sense and apple hasn't really done anything else on vr or ar just yet right like I mean, AR There's kit, no... the AR stuff on iPhone. Other than the really software, well. yeah. 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 So I feel like their software has really built up over the years, and eventually they could tap into that with a pair of glasses or something, right? Yeah. So anyway, I think a lot of people on the YouTube chat think we're actually done. We're not. We still have two segments to record. We're we still have yeah. to go. It's just a long, <laughs> long day. Yeah. And actually, let's just go from one sure. straight to yeah. the other. And so yeah, we we'll be able. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to do our working on segment. We're going to do our pick segment. Let's actually just go straight into the yep. outro after that. And then okay. we will stick around for just a little bit to answer any lingering questions. They don't they could be related to the duo. They could be related to X box anything that we were talking about today they could just be questions about hey i'm thinking of getting x or y thing and uh ask for some recommendations on that you can get some help on from the other people in in the chat and you could get some help from us too so let's start with working on and just go straight on through dev you want to handle it because i just have the last one i'll kick off yeah So let's move on to what we've been working on. Um, I've I've been doing so much. I've been testing so many <laughs> things. Have. Some graphic stuff. Yeah, I mean, we both have. I've been testing some graphic stuff. I've been testing some VR stuff. And I cannot say specifically <laughs> what either of those things are. But stay tuned over the next couple of weeks. And you'll see a lot of news from, uh, from me on all of that. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah, I wrote up a thing, too, about the Xbox Series S and what a great value it is. So be sure to read that piece. We're going to have a video up on that soon, too. Sherlyn, what else have you been doing? You don't seem like you're working enough. Let me just say, you're not busy <laughs> at all. I, yeah, I know. Welcome to Sherlyn's <laughs> weekly corner where she complains about too much work. Um, and so this week has been all about the concurrently handling the Android 11 review and the Surface Duo review while also doing all of the other new <laughs> stuff. It's been... A ride. Um, so yeah, check out the Android 11 for review. We, we kind of wanted to talk about it on the podcast today, but we mm-hmm. had too much other new stuff come up. Plus, there's not really that much to say about the Android 11 review. It barely deserves because... a version number, it seems, man. Yeah, I, I almost like my original review uh, conclusion for that was like, this doesn't feel like Android 11. It feels like Android 10.5 is what I you know, mm-hmm. had in there. It's iterative. It's, you know, minor. And a lot of the changes you could disable if you don't like them, which is a good thing because a lot of them I didn't really like. But um, it still provides important, useful tools like built-in screen recording at last. I'm... I'm a bit of That's a one thing iOS did before Android. That's amazing. 
Wow. Yes, yes, one hundred percent. I can't believe that Apple beat them to the punch with that, but there you go. Um, and then there's important like privacy setting features, like one-time permissions and auto resetting of permissions uh, for your apps, which is great. Um, and then everything else is really about bubbles and conversations, notifications. So check out the review on Engadget.com. We also have a review video on the YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, and then other things that we're working on. <laughs> I thought I could get a sort of a break next week from the crushing workload, there is but no, no break. we have, there is no, there's break. no break. There is the Apple event. And then I just got late last night, uh, another embargoed review device coming. So yeah, that's that. And then next week we have a bunch more fitness devices to test. So there's, there's y'all, you will see so me much. tweet a lot about not sleeping. Basically that's what's going to happen. I'm sure we'll be dealing with a bunch of stuff too. Like all the new hardware is coming. Um, eventually yes. maybe we'll see the Xbox series X as we're recording this. I just saw some hands-ons go up and now I'm just like, I'm sitting here yeah. fuming and Keeping. just like writing something to our PR person. So we're going to have something on all this stuff soon. Holiday gift guide, yeah. right? Oh, exactly. So I was going to say as, as, as if that wasn't enough, we're also in the middle <laughs> of doing our prep work slash early work for holiday gift guide. Can you imagine it's already September and God. we're going to be getting ready to recommend you like things to buy for people that you won't be seeing for a while in person. Um, so yeah, there's that. So yeah, <laughs> I, 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 if, if I'm not responding to people emails, dear PR people, please, please be patient and understand. Yeah. Trillin's going to be busy playing solitaire for eight hours. All for again. that. That's wow. only when I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Let's move on to our uh, <gasps> pop culture picks. Yes, and as usual, relax. Sherlyn, I'm going to let you kick it off, but uh, I have no <laughs> idea what you're choosing because you like to make this a secret. So what is Yeah, that? I think regular listeners know by now that I refuse to tell. I like to, for the reason I hold my recommendations is because I want the Avengers reaction uh -huh. real, like recorded for posterity. So, okay, Dev, this isn't really my main recommendation, but one of it, uh, one of the things I've watched recently for the first time, and you're going to be like, what the shit? <laughs> Uh, this past weekend, I think I saw Red Dragon for the first time okay. on Netflix. Oh, oh. All right. Which is the sequel prequel type thing to uh -huh. Hannibal slash The Silence of the Lambs. Did Silence you watch Hannibal? I forget. I have seen Silence of the Lambs ages ago, but what I did after watching Red Dragon was then watch Silence of the Lambs again. So I, it was nice to I, see. I see you're doing everything but watch the series backwards. I told you to watch. Wow. <laughs> it's true. I'm not watching anything. You're doing everything <laughs> But the thing I recommended you do. I'm like, let's watch Devendra said to watch this. I'll watch Red Dragon instead. And you also went straight to the bad third movie. <laughs> Have you seen Silence of the Lambs before? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then good, I rewatched it after Red Dragon. Perfect um, movie. Yeah. So good. It's a good movie. Uh love Jodie Foster. I think <laughs> that's yeah anyway mm -hmm. but okay my real um recommendation which i send to one of our video producers every week uh to get the <laughs> video ready for our live stream and and it's where i'm going to refer to now because i've forgotten why i've sent him what i have is a running list of things i want to recommend and then i pick them out every few weeks and sure, I send them to greg sure. this week i've sent i am recommending uh in the shadow of the moon have you seen that on netflix i have not so it was a, it's a it's a film that was released last year on Netflix. It stars um, I think Michael C. Hall is one of the stars, and it's about like oh yeah 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 it's mm -hmm. about time travel sort of, but it's mm -hmm. also weirdly timely haha <laughs> pun um, because it's also about a bit of civil unrest mm -hmm. and uh, you know racial tensions and stuff like that. So the protagonist is this guy who his wife dies during childbirth because. And I don't think that's a spoiler, by the way. And his wife died during childbirth because he was chasing down this woman murderer who's on a killing spree. And the murderer seems to be doing something really strange, like how she's killing people. Is she's mm -hmm. be she's able to seemingly remote melt their brains, like she's <laughs> turning their brains into goo okay. or blood sure. uh, from a distance. And <laughs> he's yeah, so he chases her and he realizes that she's actually traveling through time and he's chasing her through time. So I, I mean, it's not the best movie, but it, it has an interesting premise. I, I, heard and... some stuff. I, I do want to shout out from the same director, Stakeland, which is a 2010 movie about vampire hunters, which hmm. kind of rules. It is a really cool vampire indie hunters, vampire movie. movie. Yeah. So check that out. I love Jim Mickle. Yeah, you know, I'm just not going to and watch other shit yeah. again. I'm not talking uh, to you. I'm talking to our listeners oh, who okay. <laughs> are wise enough to listen to wow. the things I suggest. 
<laughs> what are you watching? What are you going to recommend I watch? This uh, I would recommend people not watch the new Mulan remake on Disney+. Yeah, Plus. I already saw um, that. Sorry, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. But, it's not yeah. worth 30 bucks. It's a very pretty movie, but I think a very basic version of that story. I mean, in a weird way, they try to make it a more deeper nu uh, yes. Mulan type thing. But here's my thing. I think it's just a dumb or crouching tiger. That's what they've turned that story into. Which yeah. I can I just say that as a person who grew up in Asia, watching having watched so many different versions and interpretations right. of re live drama, live action, uh, Mulan in TV series form or in movie form, movie form, um, I definitely it was hard for me to watch the Disney version in part because it's quite a faithful adaptation of the cartoon, which is mm -hmm. fine. There's like some real replications of scenes that were in the cartoon that I think yes. those fans of that movie will enjoy. But and they took away some things like yeah. Talking yeah, it animals took, and stuff. And yeah. it, it took away talking animals for sure. <laughs> and a lot of the like the crickets missing. Mm -hmm. But um, it also introduced some new characters that didn't feel like they totally fit in. Um, the, the set pieces were great. The scenes mm -hmm. looked beautiful. Um, they've moved the setting from uh, like a typical, like a, we call them like a courtyard style square house. And then they've moved it to like a round uh, community uh, housing mm -hmm. village style, which is a very different province and a very different historical like setting so for me a lot of the period <laughs> facts were a bit off and i just was like oh this doesn't sit right with me but if you don't really know the mulan story the way i do like the chinese historical cultural sure. way this won't be that bad for you but it's still not it's not it's fine but yeah here's the thing everybody i think crouching tiger hidden dragon is one of the best movies ever made it's fantastic i've mm. seen it many many times ang lee was actually the first person they tapped to do this remake and he was just too busy so i imagine right. his version would have been Something a little more interesting, at least. Um, my real shout outs, by the way, are just two movies I've seen <laughs> dozens of times over the past couple of months because my daughter, I, I feel like I've introduced her to these movies and she's <laughs> latched on completely. So Sophia loves My Neighbor Totoro and she oh, loves Kiki's it. Delivery yeah. Service. And we just watch them over and <laughs> over and over again. But here's the thing. These movies are so good. I don't care. I don't care because I love them so much. So I love every time I rewatch these movies with my daughter and seeing her get so into them. Mm. It just really reminds me of how great these things are and the way movies connect with kids can be very different than, you know, the way I typically review movies. But I love mm -hmm. these things. They're just fantastic. And yeah, I just want to say like these great movies, they're great. And they're also streaming on HBO Max right now with all along with all the, all the other Studio Ghibli Sweet. stuff. So you can watch them easily. You don't have to go roll out Blu-rays and DVDs like you used to. So yeah, check those out if you haven't seen them yet. All right, and, and I'll do the outro now. Yeah. We're going to quickly do yes. the outro and then take more questions from the chat really quick. You ready, Ben? Hit that outro. All right. And that's it for this week's episode, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Devendra online at... At Devendra on Twitter. And I podcast about movies and TV at the Slash Filmcast at SlashFilm.com. Also podcasting about Legend of Korra at Republic City Dispatch. Just Google that. If you want to send me a list of shows I'm definitely not going to watch, please tweet me at Sherlyn Lowe on Twitter. Email us your thoughts and feedback at podcast.engadget.com. Please leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Okay, yeah, we are through right, with the recording. Let's uh, keep it going. In yeah, case let's we keep get it going, going yeah. just in case there's so, anything um, fun that happens. So yeah. I, I saw a couple of things in the chat specifically about the duo that I don't think we hit. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an issue. Someone said was talking about water and dust resistance, and they were yeah, a little we were that. Um, frustrated that uh, you couldn't get the two sides of the thing. Um, sealed for water and dust and maybe <laughs> just leave the hinge yeah. but like that would leave the entire device you wouldn't be able to it say would, that the entire it, device yeah. is it sealed, doesn't protect right? much and uh, listen i brought so i had a nice sit down chat with microsoft and i like hit all the questions like why doesn't it have nfc why doesn't it have waterproofing why doesn't it have all the stuff we expect in, in phones these days and it really comes down to the dual screen is really hard to build things for and they didn't want to just waterproof one part and then leave the hinge like completely open. So it is a very vulnerable device. And I think that is a problem, especially when we expect our expensive phones to last, you know, 
a bit in the rain or a quick dip into the sink or something. Uh, yeah. I, I, and also that's not how certifications work. Like if yeah. you want to get an IP certification, you need to see the whole thing. So yeah. that's just not going to work. So it's not going to work. It's a shame. There was also a question about uh, what, what unlock methods does the Dua have? I ha didn't hear anything about face unlock. There was no, specifically a question about face unlock. We said that we said that it doesn't work with Windows Hello, which is the IR cameras, which would enable. Well, Windows unlock, Hello is technically any biometrics. But, any biometrics. Yeah, so, but it doesn't, it doesn't use the camera. But during that, yeah, I was saying that it mm -hmm. doesn't have the IR room for the IR cameras, which would then enable better face unlock. You could use mm -hmm. the Android built-in face unlock, I guess, which is mm -hmm. like no, just a picture bad. of your face. But the security on there is not that great. Yeah. So I've used the fingerprint unlock most of the time, and it's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. You can also use pin and password if you want. Like, yeah, but the fingerprint thing is like at the groove where you actually hold yeah. it to open up the device. So I actually think that's useful because you're basically unlocking very, it as you're opening yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's very, very easy to just mm -hmm. open like that and unlock at the same time. Yeah. So uh, I was actually curious about one thing, um, Sherlyn. You've been talking about like seeing many, many different. Um, uh, tellings of Mulan, um, especially <laughs> yeah. like growing up in Southeast Asia. And so, yeah, I'm an American. I'm also extremely stupid uh, at least in the American <laughs> sort of way. So I'm like, oh, yeah, Mulan, that thing that Disney made up completely. Oh, okay, good no, Lord, really? No, that oh, is, no. Well, I had just never <laughs> questioned it. And so this is there's actually kind of like is mulan like is that a reference to a historical yes. thing oh my okay. gosh so she is she like the kind of like chinese joan joan of arc then like i wouldn't say i wouldn't go as far as joan of arc she basically the story is hua mulan which is her full name um dai fu chong jun which is takes the place of her father to go into the army mm -hmm. and it's a story based on a historical character that i think gets a little lost in the facts and the legends of it so the actual story there's very few real details to go on we just know that there was a woman who represented her dad in the and got conscripted but the stories become legend and so in mm -hmm. that sort of way it's gotten like yeah she's it's, it's a symbol of fili filial piety which is in the um, new Mulan movie, one of the last characters that they added to the knife thing, whatever, uh, one of the new values that they really were focusing on is this idea of being good to your parents, right? Filial piety. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the story is known in Chinese culture for. Uh, Mu the Mulan Disney animated film embellished a little bit by adding like that romantic component, which, by the way, a lot of the other retellings of it in, in Asia also do. Like they They always have to add this like, she's a woman dressed as a man and the men all kind of like her but they don't know what the hell why so there's that um but yeah no the historical of it we don't know how far she went in the army we don't know if she really had such a great impact on the nation defeating its enemies and whether she protected the emperor and whether he was even aware of her <laughs> but for her name to be passed down like that through the centuries she has to have had an impact so people knew of her uh at least on some level Okay, yeah, I was going just in like the very broad sense of like young woman who joins the military, sure. like Joan Pretend of Arc. To be a man but... and joins the military, yeah. But right. I, I um... don't know the Joan of Arc story well enough either to to make that kind of comparison. To I mean, there was also like a significant amount of you know like I don't think mm -hmm. there's nearly as much like religious layer to Mulan as there was uh, Joan of Arc. Mm. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, yeah. Cool. Anything else? Um, yeah. There's I'm, a lot of other questions. Yeah, I think that people are pretty satisfied. They are a little sad at what we had to say about the Surface Duo. But For sure. Hey, I mean, like, we are no, sad. I, I feel like sad. <laughs> nobody is more excited about the Surface stuff than me right now. Yes, because I love, true. I love how far they've come. But we got to criticize these companies when they do wrong. That's the only way they'll do better, folks. Like, that's how this works, you know? I, I, yeah, I'm like checking in with my reviewer group friends now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of them is going like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be in terms of like how the reviews all came out, like what right, everyone said. Right. He thinks that everyone is kind of optimistic. And then except for certain publications here and there. But I mean, like, and Gadget's review is on the positive side, like is on the optimistic <laughs> side of things already. So, yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> and just because this one is bad doesn't mean the line will be bad forever right. it's mm -hmm. 
it starts bad and then it gets really it good. It starts like, bad. No and also this is, this is paving the way for an, an eventual dual screen, actual single folding screen phone. You know, like this is the baby steps towards that. Um, I'm more interested in this path Microsoft is taking than the one we've seen from Samsung for, for so far. But who knows? Yeah, it's well, good to have we'll some see. competition in this whole market. Yeah, and it's... we'll see what the people when people start buying these on mass, and we'll start seeing people report problems, right? Yeah, on, like yeah. when people who've bought this in the real world. Um, <laughs> and I can't wait to see what happens then, because then people can't be like the reviewers were biased. No, it's this is happening outside. This is happening. It's like why didn't anybody warn us? Mm. So we've yeah. got one question from Matt. He said, "Do you think there's a, a if?" Do you think a modded Pixel G Cam app for the Surface Duo could fix the camera? So I was going to say that I, I initially thought that there was some kind of Google software going on in the mm -hmm. image processing algorithm here, but actually after I looked, I was not really. It's Microsoft so, stuff, yeah. It's Microsoft stuff, but yeah, I do think that um, the Pixel phone uh, camera app would help a little bit because Google's algorithm is that good. Uh, I do think though the the sensor might be a bit small. I think it was like what an f two dot I'm not actually one hundred percent sure. And let me go. I can pull up the spec really quick. Um, but yeah, I, I think there are some hardware constraints. But the bigger problem, I think camera quality is bad. The bigger quality, the bigger issue with the camera is just it's so tricky to use. Mm -hmm. Let me just the camera is a yeah f two dot o one micron, uh, face detection autofocus. 11 megapixels. I think it's fine. It's mm -hmm. like the hardware is eh. Um, it's fine. But like, here's the thing. Like I've been prioritizing my smartphone cameras based on how well they can take baby photos. And I would yes. not trust this one for baby photos. Like you will not catch fast moving baby. You will not like, there's a lot of stuff it will not do. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, babies are so well known to move at incredible high speed. Uh, have you met a toddler, Ben? <laughs> yeah. It's no, always running true. around. That's true. <laughs> they um, run so fast. I, I need I stabilization. That, I need everything. I think that what Cher said earlier, which is like, you will not be able to flick the camera on so mm -hmm. fast that you mm -hmm. will be able to catch that perfect moment of baby smile yep. before they go move on to other thing like that is a great real world way yep. to um to uh measure a camera because not yeah. everyone does like wildlife photography or and anything. there's there, there's no stabilization either too which is this, I, you need video stabilization you need a good camera like that you need good camera sensors and it's kind yeah. of lacking both yeah it's it's a little bit annoying because also I I mean I'm trigger happy I tend to take a lot of photos of things that suddenly interest me so for mm -hmm. me I'm so used to on my Android phone I just double click and take a photo right that's mm -hmm. the shortcut there this does not this you can't you just you just can't do that with this it's mm -hmm. you'll lose moments and you'll find that the number of pictures you take is greatly reduced which could be a good thing for some people mm -hmm. yeah yeah I do find like I will say one good thing like I did find myself using it differently than a normal smartphone so i wasn't Definitely, just like exactly. sitting there doom scrolling twitter like i often end up doing like because i can have twitter open i can have other things and then yes. it made me feel like oh i could just go to kindle and read a book in a more natural yeah. way so it felt a little more immersive. ambitious than a single yeah an immersive yes. than a single screen phone um, but then i also missed some of the ease of access of the camera and yes. of just being able to whip out a phone from my pocket and just like quickly get to something. So there's a balance we need to figure out. And I think Microsoft is in the process of learning or, that. But, yeah. Or figuring out how to kind of position this device, right? And I think yeah. they're kind of getting close. This is not a phone. Don't think of this as a phone replacement. It's not. And initially I was like, I'm more engrossed using mm -hmm. this thing than a phone. I definitely mm -hmm. like the phone is something I can like see as a distraction. This when I'm using it, it's an activity. It's yeah. something yeah. that I need to devote attention to. To. And then you close and, it and walk away, which and then could I be walk a good away. thing. Yeah. But then if you want to use it as a phone that like you look, keep an eye on your notifications with, you can also still like have it open both ways. And then <laughs> so big. it's a little bit weird, but it's you know, so I, I asked Microsoft specifically too, I was like, guys, why is it so wide? And they're like, we wanted three by two. I'm like, okay. Or is it is it four by three? It's I four by one. three individual. It's a square and it's three act aspect ratio. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but they really wanted to get as many pixels as they could into that size, and I feel like it's just a maybe half an inch too wide. I feel like it would be a little more usable and convenient if it's a little, a I'm, little less wide. I am actually okay with it. I mean, I've mm -hmm. I've come to terms with the fact that I think this is a two handed phone. Like yes. if it's a phone, it's a two handed phone. Two -handed. If it's like in this mode. I can actually use this mode one-handed fairly easily. I just use the right screen, and then the mm -hmm. the you know 
one-handed keyboard is actually pretty okay in this mode. But yeah, reaching across the page to get icons that are on the far left from mm -hmm. the right is a little bit difficult. For sure. <laughs> it reminds me just in terms of where we are, like this is the Palm Pilot era of PDAs. This is where like, hey, this thing exists. It can do some cool digital stuff, but it's wonky. Typing in it is really hard. Things kind of half work and half don't. Uh, and eventually that led to the BlackBerry and led to the iPhone. So yeah, who knows yeah. where I this mean, can all go. It's yeah. all about evolution and mm -hmm. it's got to start somewhere. And I think this is the where, where Microsoft is starting. It's, it's, it's a decent first effort. Um, mm -hmm. I, just, I find like people who are, <laughs> you know, it's it's funny to see people get very adamant about defending a device like this because I feel like you're forgetting that the rest of the world is not going to pay thirteen ninety nine for yeah, a device yeah. that if you want to buy it, fine, but don't say <laughs> we didn't warn you. I think like that's it. I think if you truly wanted to maximize your doom scrolling, you could mm -hmm. have you could you use do it in tablet mode. mode. Yeah. yeah. You, so you use tablet mm -hmm. mode. You have Twitter on one side. You uh -huh. have a Kindle app open on the other side where you're reading The Road by Cormac McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't read that book right now. Just, just let it go for a little bit. There you go. Hey. Just a lot of Reddit notifications. Let me unlock. Yeah, watch out for your notifications. Oh no, I, I cleared the bad ones. <laughs> I always get like uh all the bad ones. Okay. So mm -hmm. no no photos, no nothing. Here you go. I hey. moved I changed the home screen back to the OG, I think. Um mm -hmm wallpaper let me make it i don't know should i make it brighter so it's not reflecting let me... i don't know if that'll help too much i will say one thing the thing i'm really looking forward to in phones now is high refresh rate screens and i would love this yeah. device for all the scrolling i'm doing to be smoother and look smoother so gen 2 maybe gen 2 with a 90 hertz or 120 hertz screen that is so much smoother and can do a lot more stuff i think that would be a lot more useful to a lot of people so I'm saying one thing in the yeah. chat. What do you think about connecting an external keyboard and maybe a pointing device? Would that work? No, well? that would, would that work. would be better. Uh, yeah. Not a pointing device because Android's not built for anything like that very well. Mm -hmm. You could, you could. It's just a, Android's <laughs> much more friendly to touch than than a cursor. Um, they do have I a think, lot of pocket Bluetooth keyboards that yeah you could pair. Easily. Right, and in that case, I can also connect a keyboard to my phone. Like yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay, and I think that might be it for Woo! today. All right. Thanks. There's to so much news. Yeah. Yes, there's so much news. Thanks to our live stream team. This video, like this whole stream, comes to you via our team led by Kyle Mock, Owen da with Ovi Owen Davidoff, Ka Greg Carmel, and Julio Barrientos. But it's powered by everyone in the chat. Thank you so much for being in the chat. It, Thanks, everybody. It really does like enrich the ex experience for us. If you've stuck around for this long, rate the show in iTunes. If you've missed something, go download the show. It's on lit literally every podcast platform, including Spotify. And I think we're out. Lots of Thanks, Apple folks. stuff next week. Thanks for the chat, everyone. Come back next week. Bye.